Hi, and welcome to Nuxtux Creative Studio. My name is Jonathan, and in this video, I'll be showing you how you can easily add fire overlays to your videos and track it to your scene. Now, this video is not sponsored by anyone, but if you're looking for some cool assets such as fire, smoke, rain, lightning, etc., there are two websites that I can recommend where you can find some free and paid assets. You have FX Elements and you have Action VFX. All right, I'll start by adding the clips to the timeline. I created a zone for this clip since the first frame is a black solid. By clicking on the film icon, I can import just the video. Next, I'll add the fire overlay. I added two effects to the fire directly inside the project bin, levels and rotoscoping. It might be difficult to see, but the black solid around the flame isn't completely black. This could cause issues later on. Using levels, I can increase the input black level to fix that. Next, we have the rotoscoping that I use to exclude the parts of the flame I don't want, such as the small flame at the bottom. I have the alpha operation set to minimum. I'll use the film icon to only import the video that I'll place above the first clip and trim it down. I'll click the purple dot in the bottom left corner of the top clip to add a transition. The transition will match the overlapping areas of our two clips. In the effects and composition stack, I'll switch from wipe to composite and transform and set compositing to screen. I'll use the composite and transform to position, scale and rotate the flame, but first I'll add a horizontal flip to the fire clip. Then I'll position the flame on the door. Now, if we play back our scene, the fire doesn't stick to the door, obviously. I'll disable the fire track and select the first clip. In effects, I'll search for motion tracker and add it to the clip. We'll get a red rectangle that we can scale and reposition. I'll look for something to track in the scene. Something static will work best in this case. Zoom in for a better view. There are a few tracker algorithm options to choose from. Dasyam and Nano are AI powered and you have to download some libraries to use them. The links to the libraries are available in the KDenLive online documentation. I'll stick with KCF for this one. You can adjust the keyframe spacing depending on your footage. Use smaller numbers for shaky footage. I'll then click on Analyze to apply effect and KDenLive will start tracking. If we play back, we can see the result. We can zoom in to see if anything is off. The track is a little shaky, but I'll fix that later. For now, I'll copy the keyframes, then disable the tracker, don't delete it. I'll then import the keyframes you copied to the fire, or rather, to the composite and transform layer. Click on the hamburger menu and select import keyframes from clipboard. Data to import is rectangle, set map to position, set to center and center, uncheck limit keyframe number. Now I'll use the position offset to fix the position of the fire. I'll scroll up and down, hold control or command for higher increments. So up, down, left, right. Then click OK. When I play back, we can see that the fire sticks to the door but moves out of place. This is less about the tracking and more about the perspective change, I think. To fix this, I'll add a transform to the fire clip and manually correct the position and scale of the flame. As the camera moves closer, the objects look bigger. Now, to blend the flame into the scene, I'll add a saturation effect and lower the saturation of the fire. Then, I'll add a lift gamma gain to tweak the values and colors of the fire. You can also change the color of the fire altogether. Next, I'll add a Gaussian blur and set the X and Y to 3. Now, to fix the shaky tracking, I'll disable the effects on the fire clip, select the first clip, turn on the tracker, hit reset and proceed to tracking something else in the scene. You can automatically remove all keyframes after cursor using the hamburger menu. Next, I'll repeat what I did before, copying the keyframes and importing them into the composite and transform layer. I'll re-enable the effects on the fire clip. Now, when I play back, it's less jittery. Next, I'll add smoke behind the fire. I'll select the fire clip in the composite layer and move them to the track above. Notice that our fire overlay broke. To fix this, I'll select the composite layer and change composite track from automatic to V1 since that's where our first clip is on track V1. Now to add smoke. Over in the project bin, I have the smoke asset to which I added a rotoscoping set to subtract with some feathering. I'll drag it onto the timeline 
match the length of the other clips and proceed to adding the composition layer. Switch it to composite and transform, but this time I'll set it to multiply since the background is a white solid. I'll use the composite layer to position, scale and rotate the smoke. Add a rotoscoping effect to the smoke to mask out the top that's being cut by the edge of the frame. You'll notice that the mask is behaving out of place. That is because it's affecting the original position of the smoke and not the transform result that we're getting from the composite layer. To fix this, move the composite layer out of the way and adjust the mask. Next, we can move the composite layer back into place. Make sure to set the rotoscoping to minimum so that it takes into account the rotoscoping from the project bin. With the smoke in position, I'll import the keyframes from earlier into the composite layer of the smoke, same as we did with the fire. Next, I'll drag and drop the corrective transform of the fire onto the smoke. The smoke is a little low in the frame. I'll add another transform to move it up a little. Next, I'll add a curves, set the channel to alpha to control the opacity of the smoke in rotoscoping. I'll then add a lift gamma gain to add some red to the smoke so it looks like the fire is interacting with it. Now, to make it look like the fire is part of the scene, I'll select the first clip and add a rotoscoping mask in Mask Apply. Make sure it's rotoscoping mask and not just rotoscoping. In between those two, I'll add a colorize in Edge Glow and a Distort effect. Set the colorize U to match the color of the fire. Adjust brightness and saturation. Then, for Edge Glow, use a low threshold, bump up the brightness, and set downscaling to a minimum. I'll animate the start, starting with a 7 amplitude and 80 frequency. Jump to the end, add a keyframe, set amplitude to 15 and frequency to 120. Now for the rotoscoping mask. Go to the first keyframe. I'll draw a mask around the fire, grabbing the areas that will be affected the most by the flame. I'll scrub through and keyframe the mask. Add feathering. Then I'll play back everything. Smoke tends to move faster than what I have here. But if we adjust the speed of the smoke while we have an effect with keyframes like the transform we added to the smoke earlier, the keyframes will get lost in translation. Fortunately, the corrective transform came from the fire clip, so we can easily get it back. I'll hold down Ctrl or Command, left click on the edge of the smoke clip and drag it in. This will change the speed as indicated by the percentage number on the left of the clip. Then I'll drag it back out without holding Ctrl or Command. Notice that the transform keyframes are displaced. I'll delete that transform effect, go to the fire clip and drag the corrective transform back onto the smoke. Then I'll move it up the stack and we're done. This is what we started with and this is what we have now. Feel free to build upon this and modify the settings and really adapt this to your scenes. You don't have to follow what I do word for word. Obviously, what you'll be working on is different than what I'm working on. All right, and that's it for this video. If you liked it, feel free to give it a thumbs up. If you didn't like it, there is a thumbs down option, but who clicks on that? Seriously though, if you have any questions, doubt, or suggestions, feel free to leave them in the comment section down below and I'll get back to you. This is Nuxtux Creative Studio. My name is Jonathan, and I'll see you next time.